think they could have picked LC here though. That just gives you so little control. You need the Tides Ravage for some kind of a team Ten fight presence. And you need a frontliner. And you know, without imagine if that's an LC. Sure, she can hop in and duel somebody, but eh. are we gonna see uh, Puppy Witch Doctor Kuroki wow. Rubik now gonna get grabbed Seeger up? Seeger did actually ban out the LC though. So all right, good good call for you, sir. They're still afraid of it. And there's that Quap ban out. The last pick, though, is going to be the secondary support. We could see the Puppy Classic Enigma if they just feel like see, it. Chen is banned out. I would love to see an Enchantress here. I feel like that would be so much fun. We don't see it anymore, and she was buffed. She's now the fastest hero in the game. Yeah, Puppy does it. Mm, I think he, he used to play like Marana all the time. We don't see him do Marana anymore. He does Dazzle he a lot. He did play Enchantress. Was it one game in DAC? I feel like I saw him play it once or twice. And I was like, oh, wow, this is so rare. You never see this anymore. It was picked up once. It was actually played also at Star Ladder. And uh, Phoenix tried to play it, and it was, it was oh, a disaster. Yeah. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Skywrath Mage, though, is going to be the last grab right here. And then Great Lena, the, the immediate response from Moscow 5. All right. Why Skywrath Mage? Am I missing something? I mean, it's good to have the silence, of course. It's great with the Bat Rider. You Maybe they're similar flavor to that, like LC Skywrath, hit him with the Mystic Flare. You get a silence to try and lock down the Lena. They want to pressure. Although, of course, Lena was picked after, but you still get a silence. It's actually a really good. Uh, Zone back the, the off laner, I guess. Yeah, you get that Ancient Seal if you can initiate on the Tide before he can Ravage. I mean, I think this will be a very aggressive game from Secret. This will be maybe first five, ten minutes, a little quiet, Bat Rider working on the Blink Dagger, but this will erupt into a furious mid-game once RTZ gets a little momentum and starts knocking down towers. If they have a good laning phase, then this could end very quickly. Moscow 5 have one of these lineups that could get run over. Sniper, Venge, Lina, all very squishy. Five and with all this catch seconds. on Secret, they're going to have trouble getting away from the Spider, from the Lasso, from the Wolf. I don't know. This this won't be easy. Uh, sorry for the long wait, folks, but it is finally time as we will be able to hop into our matchup here. A best of three matchup for Star Ladder Season 12, the Europe qualifier here. We got to find out what teams are going to be qualifying and making their way to the LAN. And right now, it's going to be a 96% odds favorite for secret to the 4% mm -hmm. of Moscow 5. So just like yesterday. A couple of people out there maybe hoping for some value bets and hey getting man, a huge huge return. Yesterday it was 95-5 or 96-4 and we saw some of the most entertaining games that I think you and I have ever yeah. gotten the privilege of casting. Yeah. So you're right, secret the heavy favorites, but you never know. Could open up for some fun stuff from M5. I'm already feeling the lags, so this is uh, <laughs> destined to be a really fun uh, I'm game. I'm already here. feeling like this is going to be a disaster. Yeah, but I'm, I'm we're already try getting it. the stutter. Oh, is this a level 1 fight? Is it going to break out? Who brought the boxing gloves? Oh, big num. Nope. 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 Okay. Some Do they have wards? Out. I'm Two seeing stacks the lags on Lena. Too. Three stacks on Lena. They don't even have any wards. Oh, they have a couple of ops, but they didn't put any of them down. To me, that is just Moscow 5 saying, you guys just want to fight level one? Let's go for it. Why not? Let's just lead off with a pause. I mean, <laughs> let's just go with a pause and think about this. All right, let's analyze the roam in the jungles, Iori. How was it? Was it impactful? It was. I mean, we were down to 16 the, seconds the left. The only thing that was revealed really is that S4 leveled up the sticky at level one. That can be a little bit of a gamble. You know, you don't have the firefly to climb over cliffs and stuff. Yeah. We've seen that be the result of Batrider uh -oh. falling early. Ooh, the bottom rune. They still want it. They've got all five. Big Coconut. cask. Big cask. Okay, bounces no, around. Slideshow Dota. Who gets the bounty? It's going to be the Venge. Now can they find any kind of a kill? No, M5 will just back out. So they get the bottom bounty rune, and up top, Kuro just scoops it up. No problemo. So okay. let's introduce some rosters, see how these lanes are going. You can have the honors, sir. Team Secret. Oh, I would love that. So Radiant Side, it's your favorites. It's going to be the Team Secret boys. Third place, DAC. Those Strong guys. team. Top three. You'd probably consider in the Dota 2 verse right now. You got Kuroki, also known as the K God, right now, playing your support. Skywrath Mage, Arteezy playing his Lycanthrope. Mid lane, we're going to have S4 playing the classic mid lane Batrider. Along the bottom, we got Captain Puppy. He's going to be playing your Witch Doctor. And we got Mr. Zivgenektesev. He's going to be playing your Brood. Yes, I know it's Zai, but today he's Zivgenektesev. He's trying his Baba. best. Trying his best to tie your tongue into a knot. Dire side, we've got Moscow 5, the new and improved Moscow 5 without PGG. 
I might just have to reconnect here already, which is a little bit disappointing. But ZXC, he'll be the safe lane farmer for Lena, ex-member of Power Rangers. Renator supporting on the Vengeful Spirit. Big Num will be doing this Moscow 5 signature for Nightstalker. Even without screen, it'll now be Big Num that takes the helm. Mid, show me on the Sniper, and that'll be off lane Afterlife. One of their stand-ins here. He is on the Tide Hunter. One of the more old-school picks. We'll see how it works out for him. Is already Kuroki. Rotating towards the mid to try and make a little space for this bat rider. Okay, here comes Kuroki moving in. Concussive shot going to connect right now. Slows down the sniper, and he is back. That is it. Shrapnel. Turns around. Shrapnel 1, Shrapnel 2 now going to be dished out. So no effective gank there. Forces sniper to be a bit nervous, but he continues to find the CS. Now 6-4 to four to S4's 3-2. Arteezy stunned up. Can Big Num find a kill here? It's not nighttime, but he's got another void. Body block, body block. What you gonna do? Wow. Wolves. Nice Man. Nice wolves there. Yeah. Nicely done. Gotta respect the micro. Mm-hmm. All right, Dakota, I'm going to roll the dice. I am going to reconnect. Oh, good luck, sir. I'll go into so Radio Dota go. for you. No, yep. I don't want to buy a ticket. I just want to reconnect to the game. All Thank right. you. Well, mid lane sniper did receive his booties. He's got one more share, Tango, to work with here. Kuroki still kind of floating around that mid lane area, but now it looks like he's going to adventure towards the bottom. That bottom lane, of course, is Zai on the Brood, along with Puppy on the Witch Doctor, trying to go against this Tidehunter. Tidehunter's got 700 gold, was able to sneak into the side shop and grab some boots, eat some right clicks on the way out, and a cask even, but... He makes it into safety. Not too shabby. Your Tidehunter is 9-0 CS. This is a solo offlane Tide. Now going against a tri-lane with 9-0 CS in level 4 at only 2 minutes, not even 3 minutes into the game. He has a pretty good offlane experience happening right now. Talking about Zai down bottom? I'm talking about Tidehunter. Oh, the Tidehunter. Mm -hmm. Okay, 9-0. and zero. Not too bad. Sorry, we're finally back into yeah. it. Looks like that reconnect actually did help my bit of stuttering, so... Oh, fingers crossed it holds steady. Zai is doing very well though. 17 and 2 as they move yeah. into this bottom tower. He's got supports with him. Puppy, no points in the voodoo restoration quite yet, but you're going to need that Maledict to bring down that big tanky watermelon. Yeah, it started as a duel in, which wasn't going to be too bad, but Kuroki made the adventure from top all the way to bottom now, and Whoa. they get the kill there. But it's mid lane, a solo pick. Chami gets the kill on S4. And, well, like you can't underestimate the creep damage and the slow power that a sniper can dish out with that trap. Now, meanwhile, gets the job back done, bottom, yeah. Afterlife gets engaged on. They don't get the second bounce on the cask, but they've got more than enough damage, it looks like. They'll let the Maledict finish him off alongside Kuro, which Doctor actually gets credit for the kill. And it'll be Broodmother that does finish off the tower. Unfortunate for Secret, though, they don't get that first blood bonus. It does get handed over to Sniper. Yeah, there you do even things up now one-to-one, -one, and it looks like Arteezy has ventured away from his offlane getup. And we'll be going to work in the jungle, sacking the lane altogether. This will allow the Lena now to potentially farm up pretty damn fast. And as the four minute mark is reached, Knight comes down and Nice Ducker goes on the prowl. Where's he at? Big Nom moving around in the dire jungle. Just boots up for now, but this is the time when you really need to make it happen. If you're playing the support Night Stalker and you can't find any kills or do any kind of uh, scary supporting during nighttime, this whole pick can quickly become not worth the investment. RTZ has been already relegated to the jungle. Only level 3. Stout shield, quelling blade, ring of protection. A very basic kit, but they'll try to find some farm. Looks like they'll just do the old rotation with RTZ now in the safe lane. And Zai will move to the off lane, given this great start he's picked it's up. It's got to be somewhat obvious, though. They have to know that top lane's missing a lot. S4 is in trouble here. Shrapnel and Big Num getting involved. This S4 so bat slow. is going to go down. I mean... Uh, Arteezy left the top lane. They should have noticed that it had been Lena by herself for so long, and it's nighttime, so you might want to consider playing a bit more cautious, but unfortunately, S4, after grabbing the bottom bounty rune, comes back to lane, and by that point, the rotation's already there. Yeah, big numb. That's the kind of kill you need to get already. Making some space for his sniper, and now this sniper is feeling quite good. He's got his phase boots completed, and S4, uh, he's just on brown boots. Okay. So that's where things get a little scary. You can't outrun the sniper, and... He's always got that assassinate even if you do think you got away. Bit of a different tempo for your brood after taking down the bottom tier one. Actually makes the rotation to the top lane to maybe get a go there and take another tier one. But mid lane, again. yeah, rotation on Rinse the S4 repeat, again. Baby. They'll get him down. One more shot. Uphill miss, though. Oh, gets it right there. It's going to be Mr. Chami who gets another kill. Killing spree for your sniper. Mm -hmm. He had a, an assassinate up kills. as well. So even with those, a series of unlucky misses, he still would have found that one.
Man, all three kills from the sniper, all three kills on the S4. Dude, I've got to admit, uh, Big Num's really done a lot of work now. I'm glad I brought it up, but those two assists are really big ones. Not only shutting down S4, but now your sniper is just really off to an amazing snart. start. rather, Afterlife. Will get engaged on up top. Kuro has roamed, joined Zai. They'll do a fair bit of damage here, though. Tidehunter is level 6. Ravage available. They need to be careful about how they dive this, because if a TP comes in and he throws out a Ravage, this could get turned around on. Oh, so TP comes in. The Where's the Ravage? They're going to save it for now, but he could be in trouble. Just see oh, spiders. Renator comes in. There's your Ravage. They get the kill on Skywrath. Zai gets clipped by the tentacles. They dust. It does hit Zai, but he's in the trees. They can't find him. Gets scouted out. Now, does he have another web? He does. I think Zai is okay here. Yep, he'll make it out. Still, they get the Skywrath Mage, they punish the dive, Tidehunter yep. lives. Good teamwork. They get it done. The Moscow 5 trio just kind of all over the place. Sniper holds his own in the mid lane, continuing to build up his own bit of farm. And bottom lane, Lena had some solo time and is now going to be level 6, so your Laguna online and ready to go. Mm -hmm. We'll see if uh, Mr. ZXC wants to go for any early picks, try to build up into a Yules in good time and make something happen here. Arteezy is playing it extra safe for now and just trying to get some CS with the Wolves in the lane. Taking it nice, cautious, and slow. Wants to get the early Lycan tool belt together and maybe eventually make a sneak play into the Roche. Here's the smoke from the dire side. Two supports ready to move around and try to make the most out of this night cycle. You've got about 40 seconds until it's over, so they've got to strike quick if that's their play. Four to one, seven and a half minutes in. M5 actually have the lead. 500 gold, 2,000 experience. They're in pretty good shape. Arteezy will be the target of choice. They'll start to do the wrap around. Lena coming in. Cask is there to stop her dead in her tracks. Light Striker Ray coming on in. This should be a dead Arteezy, and it is. Maybe Puppy will go down as well. It's a three on one now. Voodoo Restoration gets turned on. Big Num has about 10 seconds left of night. He's happy to dive this tower. Six armor. He's pretty damn tanky. They get another six to one. Secret getting clowned on. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Afterlife probably going to fall. Spider Babies put on top of him. And yeah, that's an arcane bolt for the win. Kuro gets a kill up there, but pales in comparison to the victory they found in that bottom lane. Now ZXC. Well, he's going to get flame broken into the Roche pit. LSA off the mark, but no way to survive. So LS4 strikes back. He gets a kill. That, thing's a, that does make things a lot better for Secret because Secret, remember, they're finding their objectives. After they get kills, they continue to add pressure on these towers. The top tier one's going to be going down now. With a new little spiderling army coming up, they're going to plant themselves here and try to get it done. But the glyph will be popped at this point. Still no one close enough to pull out any sort of contention. So it should be more free money. And even though the exchange of them being even with these towers falling down, Secret do benefit a little bit more with the income. But... Yeah, man, Moscow 5 with that first nightfall, they really put a lot of movement across the map and caught Secret off guard numerous times. But the question is, are they going to be able to hold their own during the daytime? That is a great question. A lot done in the first night. What did Night Stalker actually get out of it? Halfway through level 4, more than half of an urn completed. Really just a recipe away now. So it did some decent damage, but didn't really stop Secret from completely farming. And but he helped his sniper get a mask no, of madness. Yeah, and phase no, it was boots. great. It was absolutely great, but yeah. outside of the nighttime, like you were talking about, I do worry a little bit, because Zai has gotten a lot of momentum. Yep. He got that early Midas, another 1700 gold. 2k gold, yeah. Curious wow. what build he'll go for. We've seen the Dagon Rush. Dagon, Orchid, uh, Necro Book. Yep, those are the big ones, and then we, we saw yesterday, I guess when I was casting with Purge, we actually saw an attempted carry Broodmother. It backfired, but it was that, like, Yasha, Indomanta, Basher, those kind of very yeah. combative items. And that feels very outdated. Did not work so well. So. It just depends how much value he puts into making split push Bob. objectives or making fights play. ZXC in some trouble. Bat Rider's there. He's got a lasso. Coconut to follow. And nothing the Lena can do about it. Just takes a nap on the fire. Ends up going down. Meanwhile, top back lane. in the top lane. Yeah, Big Num gets dove. And another Arcane Bolt will be all they need to finish him off. He's going to die. TP into the tower. Oh, big reaction. Kuro certainly going to fall here. We'll be showing me that gets credit for that one. So top lane is technically like the, what, position four for the position four Night Stalker during the day, which is not too bad. But they also got that Lena in the bottom lane. Makes things a, a bit in favor here for Secret. Mm -hmm. And Zai is just going to start making a home of this top lane. Whenever he can't make a push happen in the lane, he'll just move towards the M5 jungle and just take the farm away from there and really be a bit of a problem. So if he yeah. wants to build on this, get a Necro Book and just make sure that pressure is going to keep being on this top lane. Moscow 5 will have their hands full. Next thing you know, you're neglecting someone like the Lycanthrope. You lose a Roche quickly, and then you lose your base as they are going to be spread too thin. 
That's Definitely the so. overall potential game plan, I imagine, that Secret mm -hmm. could be thrown together. Moscow 5, they don't want any, yeah. anything to do with that. They might be stuck into a position where they need to farm up, itemize next nightfall, which is going to be about one minute mm, from now. They're not going to do that. They're going to smoke and do it during daytime. Few, uh, a few cares in the world right now as they roam on down. Smoke gets broken. They're scouted by the wolves. RTZ and Puppy react accordingly, and this should be Walk a failed away. smoke gank. I don't think they'll find anyone here. Maybe Seeker will even try and turn it around. See some pings coming out as Curl rotates over. Bat Rider on his way. Still no Blink Dagger up on the bat, but S4 does have a lasso and can try to make something happen here. Wolves squishing him up. Flame Break tries to get Lena on the high ground and actually almost succeeds. There we go. ZXC pulled into the fire in the Mystic Flare. They find the kill. S4 forces out the Ravage, and he still lives. He makes it to the high ground with the Firefly. Now the Big Bad Wolf is here. Arteezy with the movement speed is going to chase him down without a Ravage. He feels pretty safe. Show me. TP's in to try and turn some things around here, but Arteezy, he just runs on through, moves into the jungle, and it will be a two for nil. Great fight for Secret. I just felt like Moscow 5 were pressured to do something there. It's like, yeah, I know you, you probably are going to be going to this feeling like you're going to have the advantage in numbers because Zai is going to be his brood in the top lane, so you know you're going to be going against him at most of a 5 versus 4. Mm -hmm. And they have a Ravage to work with, but it's not nighttime. Vengeful Spirit, who's leading out the gank, doesn't have swap, so you can't just wave and swap back and get a catch there. And it's just easily scouted out and predicted, and they just walk away from it, and they get the best of it. I think they should have waited a bit, the one more minute for the Nightfall. Yeah. They could have taken that one minute to get level 6 on Vengeful Spirit and really gotten a lot more a lot more out of that opportunity. Yeah. Even just the movement speed on the Night Stalker makes a huge difference. So he can actually run in as your initiator, hit him with a Void for the slow. Without that nighttime movement speed buff, he's not really that scary or even that fast. But... Wow. 7-7. Seven to seven. Seeker are the ones in control. It is basically all on this sniper right now. You look at this breakdown of net worth, and he is the only one up to snuff. Everyone else has paid the price to make space for him. Yeah. And if Secret can just jump on this sniper, finish him off, their team fight just crumbles without yeah. that damage. You, you can't put everything into one powerhouse like a sniper. You mm -hmm. need to make sure you have a nice balance there. Lena should be able to hold her own, but it's looking like it's just too much tilted towards the sniper who could be handled here as the smoke flies out. S4 takes to the skies, moves mid lane, gets the lasso pull back onto Chomi, and Chomi's going to get silenced up and taken go. down. And there's your powerhouse net worth farmer easily handled, and they also will get the Night Stalker. Now, now in the jungle, they find ZXC. He's maledicted and ready to be brought down. Laguna onto Puppy, but it's not enough damage. Three for nil as secrets start to hit their stride. You see the minimap being circled. A little frustration from the sniper there as he gets picked off. His tower in the mid falls, and yeah. Secret just tighten that grip around the Moscow 5 next. I really appreciate Kuroki's classic triple null build here on the Skywrath Mage. Lots of int, lots of health pool to work with there. And or level two Necro lots of spam. And up on Zai. Yeah, Zai has got a gross amount of farm up here. I'm not really surprised he went with the Necro book as expected. He's just going to make this his home. And anytime Moscow 5 feel like, hey, it's nighttime, we better go hunting. If it's not going to be on Zai, he's going to be taking your base. He's going to be taking your tier two tower down, and I think M5 at this point are going to be in a bit of a bit of a bind. Yes, this is going to be hard now. Being able to relegate what's important and what's not. It is nightfall, so yeah. they're pressured to get something done. But if they don't get anything done, if they end up losing most of these fights, they might as well hand the game over at this point. Zai scouting them out, getting yeah. so much intel I mean, here. What he is this nice soccer going to do though? Yeah. So what's brute. also scary here is Arteezy is now 2-1 and 2 on the Lycan, and he went hand to Midas, so he's not even going for this early combative build where he should be picking up a lot of kills. He went the safe bet. I'm going to farm up while you guys make space around the map. So Secret are in this beautiful state now where they have some late-game farming tools, they have pushing power, and they're also kind of winning this mid-game as it begins. Tidehunter will DC, and I was just about to say, they one thing they could look for... Yeah, Moscow 5 is being able to throw together the farm for their Tidehunter to get a Blink Dagger. Having the Blink Ravage could help. Works good against S4 and his Batrider. It's kind of hard for a Batrider to initiate on someone outside of the Tidehunter uh, when he has that Ravage at the ready. Plus, you got Vengeful Spirit. So the opportunities for an S4 initiation are pretty limited. So outside of him, Secret don't have a lot of options as far as getting skirmishes to happen unless they come to him. 
them, which what they have been, and they've been kind of analyzing the situation well and turning things around. S4 almost has a four staff, actually. 1,700 gold already with a regen in the bottle, so he, he's doing so okay. So you can probably jump in, get a lasso force out before yeah. Swap will even be there, because Swap level one range is exactly. pitiful. That, that's where, our, you know, the, the Venge is a great counter to Batrider, in the ideal oh, world. Oh, good. I, paper, I got the exceed. That's good. So often, you'll see a Venge too far back. It takes a while to get level 11, and Batrider can really ball out of control before the bench can really do anything about it. And like you mentioned, the force staff, you, before the bench can even react often, you're already way out of range. So Tide's back. Afterlife does have a lot of gold, about 1,600 after his arcane boots. So a decently timed blink dagger is on the horizon for the Tide. They certainly need to fight around the Ravage. But this is another one of these cases where M5, their team fight is sort of built around nighttime as well as having a Ravage available for secret. They can kind of fight whenever they want. Their ultimate's a much shorter and cooldown duration. And just have a, a bit more flexibility. So here we go. Zai still up in the top lane. Three heroes in the mid as Puppy and Kuro smoke up. And down in the bottom, it'll be S4 starting to move into this tower. He eats the regen rune. And they'll look to set up a gank and then probably just push down this tower. Though right now, M5 have their hands full in the jungle trying to deal with Zai, who's not only clearing out their jungle, but also serving as a very valuable distraction. That's the thing is like for M5 on their cores who need to get the farm, there's just not a lot of options there with most of their jungle being taken care of. Oh man, look at this. M5 move up towards the secret shop and immediately a delta, a delta split rather from secret. S4 heads left and you see Kuroki head right, but Kuroki is going to be spotted. Assassinated almost gets a kill. Almost brings down Big Num with him. All right, well, M5s get on the board now with a, a quick pick on the Sky Wrath. Nothing too crazy. But the thing is, the Sniper needs to find his own farm, and there's just not a lot of farm options out there. He needs to take the mid lane, and that leaves Lena with not a whole lot, and then someone's going to get stuck on their own, and that's a formula for S4 to jump yeah. in and get a lasso kidnapping. And Yeah, with Zai clearing out their jungle and really no way to deal with it, they're, they're locked onto this part of the map right here. Basically, they're Tier 2s and kind of their Ancients if your Sniper would have enough range to do it safely. This is really tough for M5 in terms of finding any kind of farm for their team. And meanwhile, Secret are just pulling further and further ahead. Now up to 10,000 gold, 7,500 XP, as we're about to see ZXC bite the bullet up top. Oh. Nice light strike array. They're going on to Tidehunter, who is trying to do Ancient Sacks so close to get a Blink Dagger. He will get swapped down and saved. Oh, but the Flame Break could be canceling the Ventral Spirit CP on the high ground. Now she's stuck. Yeah, Venge is in a sticky wicket here. Can they actually capitalize, though, and find a kill? I know there's a lot of reinforcements nearby. S4 has already used his lasso, and he'll opt just to TP home, knowing that the Ravage is, is still attack. available. Meanwhile, up top, Zai just soloing the world. He's trying to kill Big Num. Almost gets it, but Lena again with a nice LSA makes the space. But oof. you just have this bug in your jungle who's always nipping at your heels if you venture out at all. Makes you wonder, I mean, I know M5, they got committed. They went for this Tidehunter pick after seeing the Brood. I already mentioned how Legion Commander could have been a, a possible option, even Oops. though some of the options could have been weird. Also, a Spirit Breaker could have been something they could have considered. Mm. I've seen really good yeah. against the uh, Brood against Mama, Brood. Yeah. you know, but... Better than a gem that's in a if, lot of cases. if, ands, or buts, um, what they could have done with the draft, but you're just seeing it here. It's Zai doing whatever the hell he wants. Mm -hmm. He is... Zai is achieving so much right now. He's getting massive farm for himself. Yeah. He's preventing the enemies from farming their own jungle, and he is making so much space right now, constantly occupying at least one or two members of this dire side. I mean, look at ZXZ. He's trying to kill yeah. his hard camp. This stupid little spider. spiderling it's like, there. oh, you want... No, it's just nipping no, at this him. is our jungle now. And what's scary about this is for ZXZ, he doesn't really know, is that just oh, one spider? Yeah. Or is that the beginning of a whole army <laughs> yeah. coming, to, coming to jump on me? And I, like, I pan over, and there's all of a sudden like a big brood army that I work with. Meanwhile, Puppy does get taken down on the yeah. bottom. Jump that's a successful him. pick. That does he end up with a sniper pick. Pick. Yeah, but uh oh, here comes Arteezy. Goes to the shapeshift. Does quickly grab at the bounty rune as Big Num wanted to grab it. Now Big Num, well, nice. he gets killed. Hit. Yeah, Arteezy finds a kill there. They had a pick off on nice. Lena in the mid lane while that was happening. Looks like Bat Rider deployed a lasso, and they're finding just pick offs all over the place. This is Secret just splitting the map, and now their individual cores are getting farmed enough that they can find these uh, individual pick offs quite easily. Tide blinks in, looking for a Ravage, but can't close the gap. He gets hit by a concussive, and will be the end of this little fight. Arteezy has over 3.3k saved up, already on top of his Vlad's and Midas kind of get up here. Mm -hmm. Curious to see what he's going to go right for. He, he's going to go for the Roche, and there's really no one nearby to potentially scout it out. Actually, here comes Vengeful Spirit here. 
she gonna go ahead and wave in there? It's but look ping. at this from Secret. I mean, up top, they're like taking oh, a team know. fight while they're doing Roche. They're pressuring this tier two tower. Show me and Tiger uh -oh. there. Uh oh, they find the Venge. Yep, she's got support also. There are actually two fights breaking out here. Is up top S4 coming in? Nope, not gonna find the initiation there. They just get the tower kill. No initiation around the Roche pit either. Wow, that was really anticlimactic as things started heating up. <laughs> here comes two big fights to break out, and none of them do anything. Okay, and uh, tier two tower falls. All right, good. Oh, up top, there we go. Lasso onto afterlife. They pulled the tide out. It's a last ditch effort with the uh, Ravage, but okay, sets up the kill on the Bat Rider. Sniper does assassinate to end a mega kill streak, so it works out. Take a worthy use of the Ravage to get Sniper something and finally slow down S4, but it is still secret taking objectives. They get the tier two top and Arteezy will stay committed to Roche, has it down to about half health and no one on M5 in sight to deal with. There might just be a point when Zai just takes over top lane and Arteezy works with bottom and then the other three just kind of run around with the other M5 members. They could lose fights here and there, but the other two are gonna be able to get a lot done objective wise that it, it could not matter really in the end, but Moscow 5 looking to shake this one off. It's 13 to 10. The net worth, no surprise, dramatically in the favor pretty much since the start of this one. Four Seeker, 12K, and on the rise as towers mm. begin to fall one by one, and Moscow 5 have yet to even claim a tower. Necro book, number two coming out. Zai's got his level three. Arteezy's is level two. Ugh. It's going to be a zoo knocking on the front door of this Moscow 5 base before too long here, Dakota. The good book. <laughs> the good word in the Necronomicon. It's dirty Necronom gaming. Oh, Chomi caught by a lasso, isolated by S4. Four stabs him down into the Ancients area. So he is caught on the side of this ravine. Another nice flame break to kind of slow him down. But now S4, he's going to get punished. Laguna. Assassinate was coming as well. Puppy Ooh. there with a big coconut. Death War doing a lot of damage. They bring down the Venge. Big Num very low. All of M5 kind of on the back foot. There's no Ravage to be dealt with. Puppy ends up falling. Kuro as well. Arteezy now left behind. The lag continues. He's got an Aegis. Body blocked. He will fall. But meanwhile, up top, Zai doing a little bit of rat and Dota. Yep. Why am I lagging so much, Valve? God damn it! Come uh, on, Arteezy. He's going to try to TP out. He lives. Yep. Makes uh, it out. Makes it I out. Dare reconnect again. Secret, though, still getting the best of these engagements, even though they are down a man in the sense that Zai's just more obligated to get stuff done top, which obviously is understandable being his broodmother self. And the pressure continues to be built up. Tier 3 slowly getting withered down inch by inch at this point. And Moscow 5 get one of the biggest fights they could have been asking for. But yeah, my slideshow data is also yeah, You're getting it also. Pretty okay. so re crazy. Reconnecting is not going to be jacked. I mean, I'll reconnect anyway. I mean, you can try it. See if it would help. If it's but, happening to yeah. both of us, it's more likely the server. Unless it looks like it's good now, though. Yeah, fam famous last words there, Mr. Cottle Guy. Yeah, it's like, oh, we should not see any more pauses today. Yeah, there's, you know, it looks good. Things have leveled out, right? Yeah. No one's just going to DC randomly. Ooh, Put some duct tape on it. Is he, is he about to get jumped here? Maybe. S4 is coming in. Oh, Blink's just a little bit short. Firefly's up, but will not find the initiation. Instead, flies to the high ground. Now he rotates down. He's going to bump into ZXZ. Hey there. Oh, there. Hi there. Lena sets it up. LSA after the Yules. Laguna Ooh. S4 survives the onslaught. He barely lives. Now the death ward from the low ground. Puppy gets interrupted. And Renator, flame broken back down. He should fall off to the side. Yes, he does. Now Arteezy, ultimate online, chases down Big Num. Frickin' Zai. He is so damn fast. Zai gets a tier 3 tower while this is going on. ZXC, well, stuns Arteezy, but still dies. The Wolves chase down the Night Stalker. Now Afterlife says, man, I got my Ravage, but I'm silenced. Damn it. He's gonna die. Look at freaking Zai. Nice base you got here, guys. I'm just gonna move in and take it all. Zai's like, hey team, good fight. Uh, I got the barracks if you want to work on this. Yeah. Oh, Lycan ends up going down to show me. That's cute, but barracks in some trouble here now. The buyback from Lena. An obvious big team fight for Secret. A one for four overall. The top barracks will die. No glyph for another minute or so. Trying to clear out some of these creeps. Bat Rider on his way in. What does he grab? It's the Lena. That's a dieback for uh, ZXC now. Bummer. <laughs> and they will certainly secure this top lane of barracks. Tier 2 towers in the other lane, so they will be isolated from other barracks going down off this push, but 23 minutes in. Whoa, oh, are they going to bring down Zai here? Swap. Dust. Shrapnel and Got he's dead. Him. Okay, now secret. They need to make their retreat. Puppy may get left behind. Zai buys back. Instantly BOTs to the bottom lane. Puppy ends up going down. Kuro probably going to be left behind also. The great chase is among us. Man, look how fast Sniper is. <laughs> I'm going to get that bird. Boom. <laughs> Hunting season, baby. 
Bada boom, bada bing. But look at this. Zai's like, all right, well, I've already done one in the top lane, so now it's time to get the webs going down bottom. Let the pushing continue. But yes. Look how much they need to commit committed just to take down Zai. It's not often that they're going to have that many committed to Zai because now what happens is Secret just kind of work with middle lane and add pressure still on top lane. But oh, oh man. If he TPs Ooh. in, what a mistake that proved to be. Zai just blows him up. Insatiable hunger makes it an easy pick. They did kill the Bat Rider in the jungle as we were watching that start to unfold. 20 to 18. It feels even if you just look at the hero kill score, but rest assured, it is secret that have control of yep. all things game one in this best of three series. Yep, yep, yep. As Zai will be able to spread out through this bottom lane, Arteezy's back in his jungle, farming it on home right now as his Necro 3. And about 1,800 gold now saved up. Still... Just kind of doing his own Ooh, thing. Smoke. They want to catch Zai. Do they have a gem? They do. They just picked it up. It's on Renator. Can they catch Zai off guard with this? This could be big. He big bought question. back recently. Oop. Uh -oh. Oop. He sees that it. it's been revealed. They didn't catch him. Uh oh. He we should got be able TP. To Moves into the trees. They missed the LSA. Good He's night. Gone. So now they know He's top there's lane. a gem. And right back to it. God, BOTs with Necronomicon. He's going Assault Curls. He's just going straight rat brood this game. Very, very difficult to deal with. This is one of several reasons why this hero is banned out so commonly. Yeah. Not fun to play against. Probably one of the ever. reasons also why Secret always start their bands with an axe involved. <laughs> just so that they always have brood as a possible option for Zai. Yep. Could be one of the reasons. I don't know. But they, they always ban out the troll and the axe. And if the opportunity presents itself they will pick up the brood even as early as a fourth or even a third pick sometimes teams only put it in the fifth pick slot just in case it happens to be fine but maybe secrets like as long as you don't have an axe we can do a brood yep they do fear the lc a little bit but not something that they're they're too particularly scared of all right assassinate sure that necronomicon unit a little bounty there for the sniper their tier two tower mid goes down it ends up getting denied but now the base is exposed, and Secret can move up to that high ground whenever they feel fit. Still a while before Roche comes up. How is Artor doing? 3,500 gold after his Necro Book 3. With the Salt Karas already around the corner, he's going to go BKB. There you go. Oh, okay. A little counter warding here. Very nice. Using that gem. You show him. That is a beautiful courier that uh, Team Secret are using. Whoa. It's a cool effect. Ethereal think Flame, think Red Blossom. Ethereal Flame is worth quite a bit of money, if I remember right. Is it? How Like in the three figures? Yeah, definitely three figures. What is the Blossom Red? It just something. makes him a little bit red. And Blossom then Red is from the uh, the effect, the Lotus Blossom effect. Where do you get these gems? Is there a finite amount of them? You can get them in the market. No, well, yeah, but where did they come from to populate the market? Are they just I mean, they're chests, stuff? like small chance. So a lot of them you can't get anymore. You get an unusual courier with these effects, which oh, you can okay. always transfer those effects to other unusual couriers. There's just some notes about some of your couriers and hats oh, there, Zayori. Gotcha. If you were about to hat game, I you have actually never tricked out one of my couriers. Oh, I have a courier with Lotus Blossom and Blossom Red. It's pretty beautiful, wow. to be honest well, with you. Well, you know what? I need to up my courier game. I want trailer My card is Doom. not sexy enough, I'll tell no. you what. Trail of Burning Doom seems to be one of my favorite ones, but enough about Couriers. All right. <laughs> so Zai has his Assault Kuros. Uh, I mean, look at M5. They are just completely locked in their base. They're farming the waves as they come in, but they just don't have any options. All they can really do is wait for Secret to come in and try to breach their high ground. Hope for a defense, but all the while, Secret farming the Dire Ancients, farming the Dire Jungle, moving around the lanes, just controlling the entire map. What was once like, yeah, we've got some tier twos to work with. Now it's basically just their base. It's just like slowly becoming that tower defense kind of a game for Moscow 5 at this point. Got to take care of the little spider zerglings on this side. But the pressure could be built up elsewhere behind your lycanthrope. Plus you got to consider how in spiderlings, man. Oh. So good. Oh, Secret, here we go. man. It was a fight. Happening here. Ooh, Bat blink Rider. plays. All right, blinking out. Blink on blink action. Now back down to the bottom side. It's Puppy that ends up getting caught as all five of Moscow 5 rotate down. So they get a little freebie there, but it's only Puppy. There's still these big bad heroes farming around. Every pickoff helps, but they'll need a lot more than that to start getting control back in this game at a 14,000 net worth deficit. What's the timer on Roche? My timer has disappeared. Uh, whoa, it's, oh, a, max it's a big respawn. one. Okay, That's it's a, a big one. It's a biggie. But look at this. They break the back door protection by the top lane, and then they just send Necro units mid. They get this tower down to half health. Yeah. It's a nice split push there from Secret. Yep. 
trying to keep the pressure elsewhere and across the other side of the river. That way, one secret and they get Puppy back, they can still feel comfortable with being able to get a hold of this Roche. So that's why you feel like there's a lot of pressure that's still four, built on the bottom. Very brave. We'll get assassinated. There is a Ravage Boom. here. They may burn it to find this kill. Do they? They do. Oh. It clips him. Very close. Right on the edge. Well, Ravage down. That is the nine tentacle surprise right there. Secret could look to make a move here. Roche could spawn. It will spawn soon while this Ravage will be down. Which works almost to the benefit of Secret at this point. Uh-oh. Yeah. Scouted out. It's going to be Zai. They have a dust. They pop the dust. Zai. Is it going to go down? Is he going to go down? down? He does. Okay. And five. They're starting to strike back here. One pick off leads to another, and all of a sudden, you've got a few heroes dead. Now RTZ set up on LSA. Won't connect because, hey, he BKBs it. That's your 10-second BKB charge. Secret getting fended off pretty effectively here. One minute on Roche. So just about the time Zai comes up, the big boy's respawning. And Tide will have his ult 30 seconds-ish after that. This could end up being an interesting fight around the Roche pit. Kuro gets a bounty rune, but at what cost, says Breaky CPK, his life. Yeah. Shot to hell. Not much worth there. But they continue to scout out the Roche. It's going to be popping up any moment. Eyes will be on it from both sides, but the, pres the pressure will be on the side of Moscow 5 still. Top lane continues to be pushed in. Afterlife is going to be uh, relegated to defensive duty there. Mid lane pushed pretty far forward. Bottom lane the same. As long as these little spiderlings are always going to be there to kind of nip at it plus the wolves secret just have all these tools to kind of keep the pressure where they want and decide the flow of the game it's pretty impressive yeah sniper has actually been able to farm up a scotty that's a huge pickup now he's rather tanky you get that big utility slow great way to deal with a bkb lichen for example skywrath down they'll be coming up right as roche does m5 see it they uh move on in and look how fast he goes down S4 is close, but is he going to be close enough to do Batrider things? They got to be careful of this. And it looks like the, with the Gatekeeper Big Num nearby on his Night Stalker, there's going to be no contention. And Moscow 5 will be able to take down the Roche and get their kill. Oh, they make it go into Zai. Catch him with the Yules. LSA not going to be there, and he's going to turn it right on into her and takes her out immediately. Insatiable hunger heals him right back up. Now the rest of the fight breaks out. Witch Doctor dies on the backside. We're watching Zai over here. He'll win that duel. It looks like Kuro goes down to Chomi. RTZ trying to finish him off. Oh! RTZ will. That's the end of the ages. Zai did win the duel on the backside. There's only two left alive. It's Sniper that's come back to life. What Good a trap. And surround from the Spiders, he won't be able to pursue anyone. Yeah. And looking at that recap, it's a dead even trade. The age is tipping the scales to make it a break even instead of a loss for Moscow 5. That secret won't lose Arteezy though, or Zai. They're two big split push farmers. But a good fight for Moscow 5. A good fight for their sniper, even though he does lose the Aegis. He brings in three big kills. He's got 4k gold. Oh my god, he just bought a Scotty, too. Yeah, and already after picking up that Scotty, he is pretty stacked on this sniper. But you got a lot on a sniper. And I can tell you firsthand, just any sort of respectable farm sniper can hold high ground pretty damn hard. Yeah, but the problem that, that here is... Chart. There's, a little, there's a little dip there. There's a dipper. There's a dipper. That's that's one thing. But the problem is, is can Sniper do it all on his own? Going against a lineup where you're going to have a, a lot of split pressure with a Lycan and a Brood. Yeah. That, Can't be everywhere is, at once. That is the big issue, the split push as we go back into PowerPoint mode here. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Right, great. Great this stuff. This is great. This is like playing baseball and it just starts raining halfway through and you're sitting there like, man, I wanted to see the Yankees. Uh, Secret are just all about the objectives, though. Now a Desolator onto our TZ to help that pushing prowess. But you're right. The split push, I think, will be the, the bane for Moscow 5 here. Sniper can hold one lane very well, but Secret have the luxury of already being one lane of barracks up, and they can just sort of slowly rat their way, even just slow siege, chipping away at them. Will, uh, will make the nice thing is different. Sniper's shrapnel range is pretty big. He can always help push back one lane and be in another. Very easily, but yep, you sure can. But it's gonna be them constantly on the defense here. His top keeps getting pressured in, bomb keeps getting pressured in. It's pretty much what they want. A simple howl, a couple of wolves and spiderlings will be able to take a lane over on their own. And I don't think I could see Moscow Five getting all three lanes pushed back th through the river. 
at any point in this game unless they manage to take down Secret as a whole here, which could be the game plan. They smoke up and they begin to go on the move. They're going to be doing this without Sniper, who's been top lane farming. They find Zai. Yule's right into the big boom boom pow. Suck on that, spider. <laughs> I'm just preparing to do play-by-play -play off of a PowerPoint presentation here. You know. Well, M5, they're doing surprisingly well. There was this point maybe 10 minutes ago where it looked like they were starting to get run over a little bit. Yep. They lost that lane of barracks. Mm -hmm. Zai was completely controlling them. And one of those games now where they have so few things to defend, just two lanes of barracks right next to each other, that they can kind of just say this tight-knit group, not give Secret many openings, that when they see one of Secret isolated, just go for it. And that's what they've done the past, like, five or six kills outside of the Roche Pit have just been these guerrilla warfare style four on one big pickoffs and you get enough of those and you really start clawing your way back this is a gold lead that's plateaued they've actually taken the experience edge of this game believe it or not sniper level 24 i mean Charlie, yeah. it's just absolutely massive with another 5k gold massive understatement for right now it feels like net worth but 25k even above arteezy who's 21 21.5 they're just trying to finally take some towers. This is going to be their first tier one takedown if they get it, and they will. There you go. First tower of the game, boys. The road to recovery begins now. They pull back, and Secret just kind of wait things out. They want to... I'm curious what they're actually waiting for, though. If it's a certain item or if it's a certain movement from M5. Obviously, they, they have a game plan in mind here. It feels like their game plan is get in the base and take it quick. I mean, Desolator... Yeah. On Arteezy now, mm -hmm. two Necro books. Not too much item progression since we last checked in, except the BKB is up on S4, has not been used yet, and Skywrath Mage has a rod of Atos. He's had it for a little while, but I don't think we actually made mention of it. It's a lot of on the Sniper. I mean, they could BKB and make a rush at the base, but Sniper could do the right click. If Sniper could get focused from S4 as a lasso target, but it's going to be hard with a Vengeful Spirit and a Tide Hunter there. So there is definitely. It's a, it's a sticky situation from both sides. Secret getting the opportunity to break into the high ground is going to be pretty tough. And Moscow 5 defending and then being able to take it back the other way without losing to some serious, like, rat. The other thing is that M5 problem. have two gems. One on Big Num, one on Afterlife. And I think one of them was stolen. Yeah, Afterlife is hanging on to the one from Puppy. So they have ways to deal with um, th their lack of map control that they didn't have earlier on. You saw that ward that they put down to try and maybe find a pickoff, but gets instantly killed by the, uh, the gemmed up Moscow 5. So now M5, they got one tower. They got a taste of that sweet, sweet nectar and say, how about another? And they move down bottom. This tier one, destined to fall. There's a glyph. Yep. Boop, boop, boop. Glyph it up. Secret, they're all smoked up though. Five heroes in the mid. Zai with a blink dagger. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. They're really gonna, tower. They're really gonna on wait, down. wait for Roche or something. They're gonna maybe cut them off along the way. S4. Ooh, Roche. could hop. Okay, there goes flight. Oh, he gets spotted immediately and shot. Uh oh. oh no. Uh oh, Batrider. He's gonna get shot down. He's dead. He's got a BKB on assassin. Oh. They won't finish him off. It could have been a lot worse for oh, Secret there. They still get the initiation they wanted. Afterlife still holding on to the Ravage. Puppy going in. They killed Shomi. Skywrath. He gets credit for that one. It'll cost Puppy his life. Probably Kuro as well. But so far, it's worth it. Of course, he has a buyback. Now the lasso comes out onto Lena. She goes down. They clear out the Venge. It ends as a two for three. Ravage was not used there by the Tide. So they oh. will have it for this high ground defense. And some buybacks are going to be used here. Yeah, yeah, Sniper uses his. 3v3 on the field. Lena and Venge are stuck in the grave, and with that secret, just back out. They put a lot into being able to get a hold of S4 there, but then Arteezy simply locks onto the sniper, and there's just not a lot to defend him. And he gets beaten pretty hard. The swap comes to save him, and I almost wonder if the swap onto the sniper itself would have been better to really disorient Arteezy. Yeah. But that wasn't the case. Sniper Possibly. ends up being dropped. His buyback's going to be used, and... Secret just pulled back immediately. The 10 second the BKB was S4 saving grace there. If that was a yeah. 5 second BKB, he's dead. The assassinate kills him. But he had just enough duration to last through it. An M5, nice plays there, showing us that they are serious contenders and not making this easy for Team Secret whatsoever. I wonder if 
a blink dagger could have been something of real value here for this sniper. I mean, I mean he's got so many great items, of course, for all I of think his he's damage is sustained, but I you know there's only so many slots you can have. But it's clear that having proper positioning is also yeah. going to be of the utmost importance here. It's a lot easier when you're inside the base defending from the high oh. ground, but oh, bottom lane, a Was brief a lasso. lasso pulls back afterlife, but he's fine for now. I say that, but he gets chased. And okay. the four staff will get him to safety. Yeah, not enough follow up. Couldn't get there soon enough. But I think Chomi obviously goes butterfly after this. Then you dump the S and Y and probably look towards uh, one of the one of the Demon Edge items, either a B or a uh, MKB yep. or uh, your Daedalus, whichever he feels is more needed. Evasion, not a big deal this game. No blinds, of course, and I don't see anyone really getting a butterfly here. So I think the Daedalus is probably your best bet. Yeah. Those big numbers. TZ. Nice. An open slot now. Is that his butterfly completed? Yes, it is. Oh, my. But at that same time, the Hex comes out for Broodmother. So yeah. they will have a tool to try and deal with it here. Secret Rendezvous. They smoke up. No buybacks available for anyone. So if they manage to pick off the sniper, this could be a GG push. Could not be that hard. I mean, you have S4 Ooh. who's already looking to jump the gap to get a hold of him. But Zai also has a, a blink and blade. a sheep. Blink and sheep. Yeah. So... Abyssal just came out on our TZ. Here we go. Ravage to get it started. Connects on at least three. Batrider Whoa. as well. Switch Doctor go down right away. Our TZ BKB on charges. There we go. To Laguna, but they bring down the bench. Can they get a few more? Big Nom slowed down, taking a lot of damage. It's Zai deep in the base, doing as much as he can, but he'll fall. The LSA is there. It's a one for three, and Moscow 5 take the fight handily. Very good initiation from them. The Tide Hunter with a Ravage on at least three heroes, if not four. They stall this out a bit longer. Now go to a 3k net worth swing. And Roche, another near max respawn. Unfortunately for M5, they won't be able to capitalize as Secret will be coming up right as Roche respawns. Man, if if they get the stuns they want on the side of M5, Sniper is able to clean them up so quick and so easily. But if Secret can make it past those disables and get into the face of Sniper, things go dramatically the other way. But for right now, it's working for M5. Man, I was so surprised how he, how they were able to bring down Puppy and S4 so fast. And then with the follow through disable, they were able to just kind of easily shoot through the rest of the secret lineup. And even though M5 are down a set of racks, they have a tremendous amount of farm behind the sniper. They might want to consider weighing it out a little bit here for the Roche slash buyback. Secret, I'm curious to see that once they come back to life, they might go for another push. Because Ravage yeah. is down. I think yeah, that's a good point. They may just try to force a fight around the Roche pit. Secret should know that it's coming up pretty soon. Is this third Roche? I believe it is. So this should be Aegis Cheese, one that they should be very eager to claim for themselves. They just need to find better initiation. I think that's all it comes down to for Secret. If they get the jump there, if S4 lassos the tide before he can ravage, I think that fight goes completely the other way. This has turned into a game of who gets the better initiation. Secret, yeah. they've got the farm, although it's starting to dwindle. This is one of those games that it comes more down to execution and make or break decision making. Mm -hmm. Smoke. This is like what I'm talking about. They move to Roche now, it looks like. Roche is up. This is Roche 3. Aegis Cheese ready to be taken. Secret. They've got to be suspicious here. No, they want mid. They don't have a way to really get in there. Ravage right up in five, though. Yeah. This will work out well for Moscow 5. They'll move into the Roche pit, and Roche is going to fall very fast. Secret. Just do not seem privy or interested. I'm not sure which it is. Maybe worried about a smoke gank coming their way instead. Well, Nightfall, the Night, the well Nightfall was yeah, dropped, the so they don't really know maybe if pressure's coming their way. Yeah, or you know they're all missing, but you don't know where they are. And if you run into a Ravage, that could be another team wipe. So Aegis goes to the Sniper, and Cheese goes to Lena. So Sniper will pull his gold a bit longer here. His buyback coming off cooldown in about a minute and a half. Yeah, that would be the best thing to wait for. And Sniper can feel a little bit more free to dish out the damage, and then can always buy back if he needs to get that second Haran away. But still a long way to go here in a game where you're probably going to have to beat down Secret not once but twice with their own buybacks before you can even make it to the other side. And they still have some Tier 2s to break through, a Tier 1 even on the top lane. But this is going to be one of those kind of games that if M5 is able to kind of take advantage, they're just going to go right for the throne. 
to oh, end yeah. this game. Oh, but yeah. secret, we'll see what they put more value into. Ooh, catch out on Zai here with the Yules. LSA, blink in Laguna, and they get him. Zai goes down. Gets caught out, 90 seconds, no buyback. M5 winning this war of attrition right now as they continue to find pickoffs. Really nicely done. With Zion the Grave, they can feel a little more brave here. It is nighttime. Big Numb cruising around, starts flapping those wings, opens up that mouth, and he is hungry. He's picked up an Agonims as well as a Halberd. Fill that mouth with bread. Are they gonna bump into Puppy? No, looks like they bump into Kuro. Oh, this is gonna be another pickoff here. I don't think Kuro can get out. Assassinate flies through. They should have more than enough damage to bring him down. Yep. He'll try to Ghost Scepter, but that's not going to help you against the Lina. Look who's in the mid, though. Arteezy able to clear out the Tier 3. It forces out a couple of rotations. He immediately gets the hell out of there when he sees those rotations come, but he's done a little bit of damage in there. Rax is now going to be exposed. Little chip. This is where things have come to, though, for yeah. Secret. Moscow 5 handling, handling this near perfectly, it feels like, right now, but they need to be very careful. They're on this, like, fragile state where, oh, Swap breaks the lasso. ZXC may still be in trouble. Nice flame break from S4. Cheese gets eaten. He'll continue to chase him down, stacking up the sticky. They'll start to split up a bit more, perhaps, but S4 needs to be careful. Realizes they could turn on him, and he starts flying to the low ground. As even the Night Stalker rotates over. S4. Oh, he misses the blink. Oh, no. There's another fight breaking out at the same time. Down bottom, Arteezy dies to the sniper. We're going to stay true to the course up top. Big Num diving this tower. He's got the Lina behind him. Puppy. Ghost Scepter's there. And that just buffs up the Light Strike Array damage. Witch Doctor's dead. Secret falling apart. Now the blink over the tree line from S4. We'll get a kill on Big Num. Zai showing off the hex on the ZXC. They'll get a few recovery kills here. Lina goes down. And that is a gem that hits the deck. It's a fight that Moscow 5 did not have Sniper with. He was busy taking out Arteezy bottom lane and now taking out a tier 2 tower. So not too shabby for Moscow 5 to really hold their own yeah. with the others as Sniper was able to bring in a couple of more grabs. And with that, they'll be able to pull back and away. Still feeling pretty comfortable here. They have Aegis on hand graph. for Chomi. Oh it's almost zeroed out. This is a 15,000 net worth lead that is now down to only 2,000 experience way in favor of the Dire. We'll see another lasso. Onto Renator. Pulls him over the ravine right into his buddy Brood Mama. And Insatiable Hunger will make that an easy, easy kill. So more pickoffs happening around the map. They did force out the cheese to be used on Lena, which is nice. But there is still an Aegis on the sniper that he'll have for another minute or so. Maybe Secrets should just wind down for the next 60 seconds and then look to take a fight if they're so inclined. Wind down for 60 seconds, wind down for five minutes, wait for Roche. We'll have to see what the idea is. But Boots of Travel now picked up for Arteezy. He has won games with an item like this, on a hero like this, down much worse. <laughs> yes, he, ha he actually Like has. they've been down two sets of racks and they would make a heads up call to Boots of Travel into the enemy base and just run down the throne. Yeah, I think one almost sure way that M5 could lose this game is to go into a base race scenario. Against the Lycan, the double Necro books, all the BOTs, that is just not a race you're inclined to win unless you have a huge head start. So playing this safe, I think, is the name of the game for M5. Sniper buys a Manta to replace his Mask of Madness. That is interesting. Hmm. What to Manta off? Uh, well, the Skyrath Silence comes to mind, of course. No Orchids. Seems like kind of a strange pick. Just, oh. maybe just for sieging, pick quicker yeah, pushing. Yeah, I mean, maybe he just wants to Manta baiting, Dodge some baiting, things. Baiting out a lot. Yeah, it's so. great against Bat Rider, either baiting with an illusion, or just if you see him coming in, you can Manta right as he blinks forward. Yep, and yep. Makes it very hard for him to find a lasso target. So maybe that's what it's for, seeing Bat Rider is the big threat. No, I would have thought just more damage would be the name of the game for him, right? That data list or something to get some big numbers going. But now more items out for M5. That's a hex on Lena and a refresher for Tide. Two big team fight items that could continue to grab things in the Dyer's favor here is yeah. they almost have that gold. The Tide edge. refresher is a big one. How are these BKB timings? S4, seven seconds. Arteezy, what's he at? Six seconds. So pretty, pretty low here. Zai. 
10 seconds. He's got a fresh, shiny one. But yeah, two big out. ravages. These other BKB members, they're going to be getting hit at some point and stunned. And any point that they're stunned and could be shot up from this sniper is almost guaranteed death. So Secret smoked up. Uh, they're going to pressure this top lane. They've got their summons that are helping them push. They might just go for the base here. They see M5 in an awkward position. Well, at least they saw them for a moment. All right, they just go right for the barracks here. Necrobook's used. There is a dire glyph. That's forced out straight away. Now they're going on to the tide. The brood starts it off. BKB's on. Now the rest of the team starts to come in. Arteezy taking a lot of damage. The swap brings him down. Puppy, Ghost Scepter starts channeling the ultimate. It'll do a little bit of damage, but it's Zai in the base who has to TP out. They do get the barracks, though, here, Dakota. Yep. So even though they don't win the fight and they do lose two... Pretty much just have to do that once more. And yeah. Mega creeps are on the horizon. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's the game plan. It's hurl bodies at the racks. Get out while you can. Survive. Survive and thrive. And look to walk away with the win. Mm -hmm. They have the Surviving. pushing power. I mean, just the summons, the necro books, the howl. They have BKBs to kind of try to their best to withstand any sort of incoming trouble. But... They could just throw their bodies at the base and get the job done there. They want to go for the Megas. Well, in the mid lane, M5 want this tier 2 tower. They need to be very careful. There's a Bat Rider pushing their bottom. Yep. Bye back. BOTs to the high ground. Yep. The rap begins. Meanwhile, back at the base, Zai, he interrupts one of the TPs. The Tidehunter can't make it back. He's got no way to get to the base. This is the play that Secret was waiting for. Here we go. One tier four tower remaining. No glyph. This is the defense they have to make. Arteezy, BKBs, the LSA. Meanwhile, on the other side, Tide left behind in a lot of trouble. He should go down here despite the Ghost Scepter. Everyone else on M5 will make it back. Kuro has his Ghost Scepter now. He'll live from the Sniper, but it looks like he will will eventually fall after life. This guy is still alive. He ended up using both Ravages. Are you kidding me? I guess, I mean, he doesn't have money for a buyback. Maybe he bought out to that point. So Maybe. You just figure you're I mean, those are big. Those are game-saving cooldowns. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Arteezy's waiting I, top, I but he has big, Boots yeah. of Travel and Shapeshift again here in just a moment and could go bottom push that in to make it go into the base and he's going bottom right now so that's the kind of play secrets hoping for though waiting for them to overcommit to that million do uh, dollar dream coil style where you stop them from TPing back they do it again on big numb he tries oh. to TP home interrupted by the flame break lasso onto the high ground no way the night stalker survives this one as M5 now losing some of this momentum they picked up still in it for now but oh 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 M5. That's a rapier. They've got a chance. That is a rapier. Rapier. This is what we've come down to. 94% favorite secret. One racks away from taking game number one in this best of three, but they got to battle their way through one of the biggest and beefiest snipers you've ever seen in your Dota life. Mm -hmm. He is really big. Oh, you know... He's not the best rapier carrier, though. He ain't no gyrocopter, ain't no Dusa, and the bigger issue is, aside from this DC, <laughs> if he gets jumped on, he doesn't really have a great disengage here. No Ghost Scepter. Yeah. I guess you have a defensive swap, but the issue is you kind of want to burn down whoever gets caught by the lasso. But they're probably also anticipating that he won't be jumped on. A secret will be more jumping on the racks, jumping on going for the base, going That's for the true. structures that maybe they'll forget about the sniper. That's true. It if hasn't been if, revealed. If That's you true. sleep on the sniper, you don't click on his inventory, you're going to be in for a rude awakening when you take like four shots and you're dead. He doesn't have a, like a, a crit instead of that Manta would have really brought up the right click crazy now with a rapier on hand. Yeah. But, you know, you do have Manta illusions that also get the big bonus of damage, but... I don't know, man. Mm. Crazy defense. Some people out there with their value bets, they're mm. sweating right now. They really They're are. dreaming. Their mouths are it salivating of, three, of all though. the hats that could come their way. Yeah, it is a best of three. Yeah, it's a best of three. And here we go. Here we go. Back uh, into it, and Roche yeah. is up, and Secret are doing it, and Secret will take it. Okay, so they'll finally get a Roche. There's a double damage rune waiting nearby. This could be a pretty scary time oh, if Arteezy man. picks it up, and they go for the base. Now, the other thing about this Rapier pickup that makes it maybe a little more appealing is even though Sniper's not the best carrier, Secret does not really have a good Rapier carrier either. Lycan and Brood, not particularly good. As we've seen, Arteezy is uh, easy to blow up. That last fight, he ran in and just got juiced. 
juiced by the Laguna. So there isn't someone that you're really that scared of handing it over to. E-Blade now up on the Skywrath Mage. That's nice when paired with the Ancient Seal. Secret need to push and make this happen if they want to go soon. Ra while Ravage is down, it's only 20 more seconds and at least they'll have one up and ready to go. Oh, here we go. Jump onto ZXC. Cheap Stick's been used. There we go. Lasso across. He's in some trouble. He's isolated. Meanwhile, down bottom, Arteezy dies in a matter of seconds to the Rapier. Oh, no. That's the end of the Aegis. Now the swap out keeps Big Num alive. Arteezy's back, but Skywrath and D a Witch Doctor just get destroyed. The Scotty has hit Artor, and he is probably going to die a second time. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. It's a three for one. Buyback on the Lena. Now oh! Can't make the retreat. Ultra kill for Chomi. The Rapier living up to its name as Whoa. it cuts through Team Secret. Our Moscow 5 about to upset the big dogs. Another huge fight, huge defense. This guy right here, he's wearing a wolf hat, but he's, I, I don't know, he's an alpha. I, I have no reference that he just, goddamn. It's just goddamn. He chop, chopped off Arteezy's head and put it on his own. <laughs> What's that? This is ridiculous. That's what I'm talking about. Maybe they didn't anticipate the rapier and mm -hmm. he take, he takes a few pot shots and he's dead. Aegis is going to be down. He doesn't make it out. I love the little play right there from I Chomi. I wonder if they realized he had a rapier. I don't think Chomi was really pushing out the lanes. They might have just kept that completely quiet until it was revealed right there. So oh, man. secret prop, maybe not ready for that. Here comes Chomi. Zai's there on defense. No buyback on Artur. He's out of the game for 40 seconds. This could be it. Moscow 5 moved to the high ground. You said no glyph. Do they just go tier 4s here? They might. S4 has a buyback. Does he use it though? In goes Zai. Oh! And down he goes. He's buyback dead already. Goes. Instant buyback. All right. A second rape here. Oh. He's going all in with this. Oh, show me. Is this the play? There's the Ravage 1. Refresh Ravage 2. Connects on two heroes. Down goes the Skywrath puppy. Probably soon to follow suit. Zai swapped back into the danger zone. Oh, Chomi's zone. in trouble. Oh, he's fine. Oh, boy. He lives. He's going to drop. He's got the second rapier. <laughs> They're going to do too it. Much. It's just too much. Moscow 5 are doing it. Oh, Lasso into the well. Secret on their last leg, doing anything they can to turn this game around. But Chomi says, I'm done mucking around, boys. I'm playing. Abyssal Blade stun. He's oh. going to go down. RTZ, can he bring him down? Oh. Chomi, he's still alive. Six HP. He's dead. There's rapiers on the deck. Who's going to get him? There's one just chilling on the ground. Get it, puppy. Get it, get it, get it. Oh, oh my God. No. Venge has one. The other one gets picked up by puppy. Oh my gosh, they actually hold on, but now Chomi comes in. It's a rapier on the ground again. I don't think Secret had the resources to do it. Chomi's got another rapier. Now yeah, he's going. It. It's over. Uh, they got game it, number baby. one. Woo! Secret upset by Moscow 5 S4. Wowie Zowie. They've done it. Oh my. What the a rapier. rapier sniper proves too damn good. The range is just incredible when you get that rapier. They had nobody closed the gap. Batrider used that first lasso on the Lena. I think if they knew the rapier was there, maybe Batrider could have focused the sniper a little bit more, but the Lena was just not the target to go for. The double rapier. What a game. 55 minutes. It's Moscow 5 that takes it. Who would have thought?